I will be finishing this painting hopefully in this video. It's taken me some time because it's been challenging to generate the image of a cloudy uh, sunrise and once I developed the composition um, I found it difficult to do the appropriate reflections. There are several things right with this image. I think the composition works well. We have a very strong horizontal but then we have these lines that actually take us towards the area of the brightness in the sky, the contrast in this particular sunrise. So I don't want to do too much explanation before I get started painting, but basically I'm going to be correcting some things. I don't like the sun so high. I think the image makes more sense if the sun is closer to the horizon because I have painted the horizon in a sort of a lighter orangey color. So I'm going to just maintain that idea and sort of paint on top of this and just create more of a bright horizon line. I need to reestablish the marina, which on several layers of the sky, I had actually mistakenly changed the shape. So I will be reestablishing this marina. On the marina, there were several elements. They could be cars or boats. I really don't know what they are, but they're closer than the skyline behind. Now, this is a sort of a bit of a dramatic change. To make things farther away, we make them lighter, and to make them closer, we make them uh, stronger in terms of darker. But I think this is a bit too dark. And then the pier definitely lost the definition with the area of the reflection on the water. So although the proportions are correct, it doesn't read right. So this line is going to have to be reestablished and the line on the pier is gonna to have to be straight. So whatever is the pier or the structure should be straight and the reflections wiggly. The colors are wrong in the water. They are not following the sky. I like the way the sky finally came out. It's um, cloudy sunrise and I think I won't touch the colors of the sky but then I need to make sure that I can reflect some of those colors on the water. So we will begin by working first on the water which is right now the most challenging and to do that I'm going to use acrylic glazing liquid right on top of my canvas because that way I mean this um, painting has dried now and by adding the glazing medium directly on the canvas, I will be able to apply the, establish this in a base of blue. So that's what I want to do right now in terms of the color of the water. I am going to use a large, and you can see how big it is, a large synthetic brush uh, the brand is Royal Langnickel. This was a very nice surprise gift from my sister about six to ten years ago. We can't really remember when, but we know that it was over six years ago because I was living in a different place and we do remember when she bought them for me. So it, they are, they look new and I'm saying they because there's four of these different bristles. This is a synthetic one that I like to use. And as you can see, it allows me to apply paint faster. I mean, this is the glazing medium, but it has an acrylic base. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is establish a darker background for the water. And darker, I mean like this. This is a combination made with ultramarine blue, a very tiny bit of a lizard crimson and white. I'm just going to apply this on top of the glazing medium. You can see how nice the glazing medium allows me to apply it with still a transparent uh, view. I don't follow formula, so if you have seen other videos that I have posted available in YouTube, you will see I haven't done this particular way before. I usually like to go around my reflections on the water 
but uh, because I think they do need to be corrected. They were not making visual sense. So I'm just covering slightly with a darker color. Now, this same color I'm going to use at the very bottom. We have an opening on the sky, but what the water reflects is was what's on top, not what's there. So um, if this is a cloudy sky, the base is going to be a darker blue. And then we're going to come back with the fun of creating all the other colors. Okay, now how many waves you want or how wavy you want to make this, it's really up to you. I, we have a little bit of an area in this corner. I hope I'm not covering what I'm doing. And it's just a slight area. It's really off the edge. Now, I do have a clean brush. I just want to make sure that this railing, the railing, railing is okay. It's where I was standing to take the photo. And the inclination is correct. I actually thought that the angle was wrong, that it should have been more horizontal, but I double checked and it was like that. I think I was sort of standing um, kind of high to the railing and I think it works fine. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is to start adding some other colors. So I'm just going to uh, briefly wash that um, brush off camera on a paper towel without really cleaning it too much. And I have created a color that adds to that combination of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. I added a little bit of the viridian green with white. And then I also have an area which was just the previous color with white. Uh, the viridian green should be closer to the front and the other lighter color should be closer to the back. So I'm going to be using the two colors. Let's see what happens. Just to, to apply slightly and, and start creating some ideas of, of wavy water. And, and you can move the brush, uh, as you can see. It's a very large brush. Oh, this should be the other. So as I was telling you, there's less viridian green at the back and it's lighter. The, the color of things become lighter at the horizon. That's what we call the atmospheric perspective, whereas they are darker as you come closer. So just briefly, as you can see with this big brush, I'm just trying to convey some idea of color of water, now variations of the color of water. And the glazing medium allowed me with the acrylic paint to not cover in its entirety what we had underneath. So I did not like the colors underneath, but they were a good base. So I'm just establishing some of these wavy areas. We then use a little bit more of the, it's this, this actually, what I just picked up, it's a combination of the two that I had made. So it does have a little bit of viridian green and it does have more white. So it's just getting this to be a wavy area. Um, the, the area where I was standing by, by that, close to that pier, um, it's the North Atlantic. Because of the structures, usually it gets very wavy. Now, in the back in here, we're going to make some changes. But right now, I do like the water better than we had it before. And it is harmonizing a bit better with what we have on the top. So off screen, I am making sure that I am cleaning my brush. I may not be using it, um, but if you leave paint on your acrylic paint, on your brushes, you really ruin them. So just make sure that you clean it and we will clean it, I will clean it <laughs> later with uh, soap and water to make sure that they're okay. This is a smaller brush, it's an angle brush and I'm going to be using it, as I mentioned, to reestablish this dark silhouette of the marina. 
So we had a rooftop on that marina. And it was slightly larger. The structure was slightly larger than I painted it. So let's do that. There was then, there's like a, so this is a rooftop. Then it's like a structure, I think it's like the first floor or something like that. And then there's another awning. And this awning, I made a mistake there. So always have clean brushes by your side with clean water. And if you remove the mistaken application of acrylic relatively quick, it should work. Okay, now I like the way that it's looking more transparent because that's exactly what I wanted. I did not want, I mean, I want a dark silhouette, but I think it was probably too dark. So these corrections that I am making, and you know, <laughs> I am going over this structure probably with too much detail because, you know, unless you live in the area, it doesn't really matter if we have that straight line down or not. Okay, so then there was like a tower here. It may be like a power unit or it may be a tall ship. I don't know. Uh, there are some cars and there's also some elements of ships on here. So for this particular area to make it a little lighter, I have actually mixed the same color we use for the water with that purple that I had used here, which was alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue, no white. But now I am using the blue color that I had created for the water and I'm mixing it with a dark purple. So it is dark, but it's not as dark as what we have there. And I'm just gonna make some marks. I probably want this to have a little bit more of the alizarin crimson because blue uh, blue sends things back and red and yellow bring things a little forward. So I just want, uh, you know, these were structures I cannot really make up what they are because on purpose I don't want to be too, you know, defined too clear. There was another thing that bothered me with the design for some reason, I happen to have in the skyline a, a deep area here between two buildings and that was mimicking it here and I don't like that. So I'm just going to change some of those so that there's no tall structures sort of, you know, mimicking that. I don't like that. So I'm just going to cover that. And you can see that it doesn't really matter if if you are... You know, if these are boats or, or whatever structures they are, uh, I just want to insinuate there was something on that pier. And then the pier itself starts lower. So what I want to do now is add a little bit more of white. Um, it's just, just a tiny bit to that purple that we had created with the blue and the the ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson that gives me a nice purple color and I'm just going to reestablish a little bit of those boats and lines this gives a little sense of volume so that you don't have everything straight and everything the same and we're going to brush it. I'm going to brush it on basically the side where we are supposed to be getting the, the light. And then here, I need to establish sort of a line that's going to tell me where this pier starts. And so then I just break the line on top. So bear with me. I think this is going to probably make the viewer less angry at not understanding what they're seeing. It was making me angry. 
Okay, so off camera, I'm just cleaning the brush. First, I take away the excess paint. You can see other videos I have. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring pieces of the paper with me to hold them near the camera. So what I'm doing is just taking away the excess paint on a paper towel or, or a cloth towel and then in water to make sure it's clean. Why do I need it clean? Because I want to go back to the dark area of the pier, establish that pier in dark. And if I have any white, this dark will not be as dark as I want it. The dark is basically alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. If you have a different set of colors and you do have a dark uh, violet or burnt umber or even black, I don't normally paint with black, but there's nothing wrong with painting with black, then you can just go directly to your dark. So this should be the darkest dark. And now what I'm going to do is just a, a straight line I don't like those reflections or those areas that were weird. I I see them in the in the photo, but not as prominent. And I just want to make sure that this reads correctly as a structure. If you want to use a ruler, feel free. Um, I don't know why I don't use rulers, and oftentimes I get myself into the challenge of not having straight lines. But that that should differentiate just slightly from the structures on top. And this is gonna be basically the pier. And that pier is going to be reflecting in the water. So these are water reflections. What I'm trying to do in this corner is to block that area where we are going to see some of the some, a little of the water is going to be peeking through, but I don't like the way that it was. I think I used a too thick color. So this is the pier and those areas where some light is peeking through should be less on your face. Now the reflections on the water should be more or less the same size as the pier and they definitely go down. Now it is difficult in, in this painting with a horizontal line to, to paint the reflections correctly going down. Now because we extended this, now all of these should be a reflection of that marina building. And this darker reflection helps me also with establishing that railing. Now, this reflection will have wiggly, so the reflection doesn't have straight lines at the end. And this is exactly what I'm trying to do now is that the reflection of the water, on the water, of the pier, should not be, <coughs> that straight. It has wiggly areas. So now we have the reflection of this uh, pier and also what I'm seeing uh, going back now um, to the dark, continuing with the dark I should say, um, these sort of, they, they, they are on the pier, these, but they're not very notable on the top. However, I think, I think I want to just insinuate what are we seeing here in terms of these reflections in, in the water and why do we have those wiggly, wiggly lines in there. So if we have one here, here, there should be probably one there and maybe one there. And now here, we should be having some reflection. And you can see that it's not as dark because I am painting on top of the glazing media that had the blue, but that's fine. That's fine. We can, uh, 
once it dries, we can reestablish that. So I think overall, this might start to make a bit more sense in terms of what we are seeing. The, now we can go back to adding some of the light color and I don't need to uh, clean the brush. I am just going back to the lighter color that we had there and maybe add just a tiny bit of a mix or not completely mixed, but it's white and Indian yellow. And that's gonna give me a very dirty color that's not nice on its own, but it's gonna help me establish some of these areas here. Um, very loose. We have more light around the middle of the painting. So by adding some of these lighter muddy color here. I am just hoping that we can um, define or describe a little bit more that there's there's something in this in this pier and just make sure that I respect again a clean brush and just the dark area should be on top of those light touches or touches of light. And again here and because I added the Indian yellow, it's what we call a little bit warmer. And it does make sense to have a little bit warmer reflections or warmer areas that are catching the light, but they're not really very bright. Um, th they look light because they are against a, a dark background. And even though the house was really dark, I just want to make a little bit more, you don't want to make too many light notes in the edge of your canvas. But, uh, you know, definitely some, some idea that we're seeing something in there that is not straight, and then there's a straight pier. And <clears throat> just reestablish that dark line. This is a clean brush with a little bit of water, just to make sure that the line of the pier is straight. Okay, so, um, that described slightly a little bit better that we are seeing some structure in there. And if you like, I'm just adding a bit more of the purple in here. Um, if, if I think that I did sort of too much of those lighter colors, just gently brush it to make it sort of go away or disappear. Now, those areas were not really reflecting because they're farther away. And that's why it was important to have them <clears throat> less dark than I had them before because they were so dark, it didn't make any sense that they were not reflecting. I think it does make a bit more sense now. And the other thing is using that same, um, sort of also adding a laser and crimson and Indian yellow to that mix with water, with, um, I'm sorry, with white and the purple color, I am making a warmer gray because at the very end of this pier, it was too dark and I just want to bring it gently. And also this pier almost looked like there's no surface on it. So it probably needed to have just a little bit of definition on there. I'm just taking out the excess and without cleaning any water, getting the dark here, because it should be darker in the front and lighter at the bottom. I could actually go even um, a little bit lighter, so just adding a tiny, tiny bit of white to, to that end, and of course you need to try to have a straight, uh, not shake too much like I am shaking. Okay, I think that's gonna bring that pier with a bit more sense too that it's going in the back. And adding a bit more touches of the light. I still believe that I went too dramatic with too dark in this area compared to the back. The pier should be very dark. 
And so this area of the other pier that comes at an angle, of course, the vertical of that pier and the reflection should be dark. So that's okay. Okay, I just added a little bit with what I had on my brush. I'm just trying to refine that edge. And what I did, if you notice, is by adding it, I just took away a little bit of what I painted. So with a clean brush, I'm just making sure, or trying to make sure, that this line is straight. This brush just has water. So I am able to move a little bit of that paint. And what I can do is use the same blue that we had before. So now this is not a clean brush anymore. So just adding that blue here to define. And, and you see how important it is to use brushes that are straight. This is, this is an older brush and it's not very straight um, in terms of the the hairs are not actually all chiseled. And I probably will need to get another brush soon. Okay. So I think that overall we can see this a bit better. I wanted to, um, I need to wait a little bit for the glazing to completely dry. So I'm going to off camera clean the other brush I have, which I can still make with a very nice chiseled edge. It's very clean now, so I can let it sit. And I'm going to use a smaller brush, but still angle brush that I can also um, use in a chiseled edge. And I have a mix of Indian yellow and white. As I mentioned, I wanted to make sure that this skyline, it's the brightest around here. So I think this will make a, a better impression of that particular sunrise. And with this color, I can reestablish some of the skyline. As I said, I did not like how it was uh, sort of looking uh, too much of a repetitive image in there with the bottom. So just breaking it, making a different skyline. And it was very rosy here, but I'm just going to lightly brush it and definitely bring a bit more of that brighter color to, to the edge. Now, what I also want to do with that same color, so it's the same on the other side. So we're just gonna go to the other side and paint that same sort of a Indian yellow and white. And it does get less intense in terms of the yellow um, as we go to the edges. So remember, we had added cadmium yellow in that area. So just brushing here, um, this is a skyline and it did look a bit weird. So let's just make it more of a skyline. Maybe a church in there, a church steeple, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's nice to, to make up things. Um, and it's just getting a nicer color here. I'm going to cover what we had done before for the sunlight. Now, because I had put a big blob of cadmium red, um, it is still feels that there's something in there. So I might need to do a bit more. I just want to gently move it towards the area of pink. Uh, on this side, we are going to continue using this Indian yellow, which is transparent with the white. And in this case, because I'm just adding, it's a very light touch and it's a thin layer. 
So because I have a thin layer and a light touch, it still feels, or, or it is, transparent. So now I need to carefully go around what we painted. I have to make sure the brush, the, it did pick up some of the dark, so just wipe it. I did wipe it off camera, get more of this. Oh, sorry, I just, I have this taped to a cardboard and I didn't realize that it actually fell. Because this is acrylic, I can actually touch it. It's already dry. You don't do that with oils, but with acrylics, it's not that difficult. So this, I think this yellow, is going to make a better um, idea of that beautiful sunrise rather than the bluish color that I had there. And just gently brush it so I becomes more of the pinkish color that we had before and it just it doesn't blend because the the pink is already dry but it just visually transforms into that color so i'm just going to get in here to create that rooftop shape with the sky, okay, and then there was a little peeking through. Uh, if you find, you know, sometimes if we find things challenging or difficult to paint and they're not needed to explain what you're painting, don't do it. So I'm just showing you, it's this was challenging, but it helped me explain that there was like an awning in there. Um, I sort of liked that that view. So that's why I insisted myself in, in doing it. So what we are going to do is, again, the white and the Indian yellow, just to cover that area with more layers so that I can get rid of that impression that the sunlight was there. And I think more white in this area, because now I believe we're creating a sunrise closer to the horizon. And by creating it closer to the horizon, I am trying to make sense of the sky with a more yellow horizon line. And I don't want to touch the rest of the sky. I think it does have a dramatic feeling to it, but I did feel that in the horizon, we needed to have this lighter. So what I'm doing is just using more of the white. I think this became a bit too dark, more of the white, uh, especially on the area where we're going to have more of the sun rising. And again, the sun could be hiding behind the clouds. I don't think I need to try to um, paint that sun the way that I had before. It was too high. And by having the sun too high, it didn't make more, much sense to, to have the skyline so light. So I think it works better. I went back to my photograph and definitely the sun was closer to the horizon, which is why I was seeing those colors. So I'm just reestablishing a little bit of that white. And sometimes it's just a bunch, you know, like you see, I have a lot of color in my brush. And sometimes I do try to blend with what was there. And sometimes I just let the brush stroke um, alone. And sometimes that, that creates a little bit more of a painterly um, image. So I think, I think this is going to be reading a bit better. And by establishing this actually now that we have a sky that has a very dramatic, the sky is the orange yellow color and the blue are clouds. So by establishing these colors here, now I can, 
when I go back to the water, I can make more sense of what I need to paint in terms of the water, the color of the water, and the reflections that we would be seeing. Okay, so this is going into those clouds. And sometimes we can have some of the yellow sky peeking through. Okay, this again has more white, but the acrylics dry darker. And so if I want to make sure that it's going to read correctly, lighter in the horizon, I just need to make sure that I make it sufficiently light. Now, um, white will make your color, um, what we say, a cooler color compared to yellow. Yellow makes it a warmer color. And so I just, I think that by, I hope you see the difference. It just opened up. It now feels like there's the warmer um, and lighter sunrise than what I had before. Um, and again, I do like the sensation of these clouds and I do like the way that this sky, I'm just wiping up a little bit of the color. And if you see, I mean, I'm just slightly brushing it against the pink that we had. I do like the pink, maybe a bit too dark, but I like it. So I think now we have a more, a, a better explained uh, skyline, probably a bit too green here. So since I already have been using this yellow and white, I am just gonna go and use a little bit more of the, it, this is the Indian yellow with white. And I'm just going to be, I, I ran out of that mix. So I just made a little bit more because here it's a, it's a bit too green. And I think it shouldn't be as bright as here. I think the center of attention is gonna be definitely around there, but this was a bit too green. And I just want to make sure that it does read like a, like a sunrise. And it's, it's nice to actually have sometimes these blobs of paint like I did here without necessarily mixing them too much. If you use a round brush, um, you can actually make those lines too, or um, what we call a flat brush. So whichever brush you have, if you have a brush like, like I am showing, and I, I use all shapes of brushes. For these, um, for these acrylic tutorials, I have been using these angle brushes because uh, they are actually nice. They, they give nice um, edges. And one thing I like is that you can use them in different positions and they give you different shapes, but feel free to use the, the one that you feel more comfortable with. So I'm just adding pieces of white. <laughs> I think I started this video by saying I didn't want to touch the sky. And what am I doing? Well, I am working on the sky. Okay, now we have the water, it's now, I think it feels much better. Uh, we do have the establishment of the pier and in, insinuating these this structures in here. And now what I just need to do is a little bit of the water um, sensation of brightness. Now, with a little bit of a laser and crimson, I created this salmon color and I think this salmon color, which could be a little bit of what we have in some areas of the sky. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just going to establish a little bit of this salmon color and it's the same brush and it has also this, um, the other color that I was using. So the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to bring that color, uh, which is this, the, like I said, a little bit like salmon color, a little crimson, Indian yellow, and white. So I want to just bring some of these reflections of, of this color in here. And it's just very, very, very light touch uh, in, in some areas, and, and not, not too much. It's just what I'm seeing more of these reflections in, in the, 
in the photograph. And I definitely see some of those reflections around here. And around this area of the pier, I have some bright color peeking through. Now, these reflections or these lights do not reflect what we see there, but there's definitely some areas where I am seeing some, some of these color. I am just slightly cleaning, not completely, and I am going to use now, uh, this is very similar, but it's a little lighter than we had before and a little bit more alizarin crimson. So I just made piles that have a bias toward the alizarin crimson and bias towards the yellow. And I'm just going to make some wiggly lines, not, not too many, but some some lines here of bright reflections the, the the most important reflection in the water is going to be around here now there are some areas that are brighter and that's why the the rosy color is the one i'm using here the brighter color with more yellow it's the one i used in the back and you know there were just some areas where we had like bright touches of them so a little wider as you saw me I put the oh, this I'm sorry about that okay <laughs> it's just my makeup setting I should improve that okay so uh, I put the brush horizontal to make a little bit of a wider brush stroke and then as I was using it before just to move on on the on the water surface clean the brush and now it's it's cleaner. What we are going to do is just um, use a little bit of that whiter color that we had in there, just to get some elements that definitely I was seeing through. And it was basically like around here and here. I am seeing some of that in the reflections of, of the water. It's probably peeking through, I don't really know what it is but i was seeing some areas where light seemed to be coming through um, pick up some more of that color and yes this this was a nice area of brightness and because this is a reflection it's good to do some wiggly wiggly lines but this is not a reflection so in here it should be straight this is the edge of the pier and then brighter in the horizon some bright areas and you know this is not to be as defined as the areas in here it should be as you can see, I'm just using the, the brush lightly on top to create some difference in colors on top of that blue that we had painted. Because it's acrylic paint, that blue is almost dry. It's not completely dry because I used a glazing medium. Oh boy, I'm sorry about this. This is... Definitely, I should have used a new masking tape to tape it into the cardboard. Okay. All right, so we are now establishing some areas where I can see some bright reflections uh, on, on the water. And these areas are, again, it's the same white with yellow. And I am adding to that mix, I am adding the pink color. I have no idea if this is going to work, but, but I think, yeah, I think this is just going to bring a little bit of a nicer reflection. So it was just the pink color that I have and the yellow and white, and they're not actually very well mixed in, in my, in my brush. Um, and then there were areas of bright reflection, and these reflections actually should be painted going down. 
So I'll, I'll be doing that once I establish a bit more of these areas here. And, and you know, when I paint um, these kind of uh, waves, just make sure this area was darker in my photo. And it could be because there were more clouds on this area. But I was saying, when I paint waves, just make sure that you can put a dark area and then a light area close by. I'm just going to uh, get rid of a little bit of that paint. As you can see, I don't have that much paint now. And I'm just going to bring this reflection down and down. Okay, and and by, I think I should do that also here. These were sort of bright reflective areas. And then I just go horizontal. Okay, so now what I want to do is to get some nice turquoise color. It's the same that we used before, but just adding with a smaller brush that I have now, just adding that sort of turquoise color in some of these areas. And especially, I want to do a little bit on this area. This area was darker, but definitely bring in some of that wavy lines. These, remember, these are reflections, the darker ones of pier etc but and the, and the waves usually you know they they go on top of the reflections sometimes and by i think that by adding this color in that area is going to bring more interest more visual interest to to the to the painting and also i'm going to add some of that nice um turquoise color Viridian green, ultramarine blue, and white to, to these areas here. Now, I also have on a mix that's more ultramarine and white, no viridian green. As you can see, it's on the same brush, but you can see that this is bluer and that's greener. So by having them almost the same brightness, the same amount of, of yellow, but you know, side by side, hopefully, we can get that impression of volume and movement that the water has. This is something you can see in some of Monet paint paintings, some of the Impressionist paintings, where he puts colors side by side. And by doing that, he is establishing a sense of volume and movement and not blending. So that's the, the whole idea with acrylics. You can probably do this faster or like I'm trying to do in less than one hour. Um, you can do it faster than with uh, oils because the acrylics dry faster. So I, I'm going to, I'm actually dipping into both colors with the brush without cleaning the brush. And one color is actually on one side, the other color is on the other side. And that's the way that I am applying this paint. You can see that the colors in the back already dried. So I can apply this color. It should probably have a lighter hue, a lighter tone, sorry, not hue. So I am just uh, adding just plain white in that end. And just, just very, very mild touch. And again here, adding some of those waves in this area with the now I have a lot of different colors in my brush I have white and I have the the blue and I have the green blue and green on each side and just uh, gently touching with wavy wavy movements of my brush in here and definitely here it is slightly lighter uh, but it's good to paint on, on a base of a darker color. It wasn't very dark to begin with, but it's good to have a base. At least that's what I like when I paint water. I like to have a base of darker water. And then I paint um, 
lighter areas on the top, leaving areas of dark that give the impression of movement. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is use another lighter blue. This is ultramarine blue and white, and it has no viridian green because this particular sky uh, doesn't have that much of the viridian green. So you can see this is kind of a, it is close, but it's not exactly the same blue. And I believe that it just adds a bit more of movement to, to that water. Again, Lisa. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Now, I want to reestablish a little bit of the bright area in here. And what I'm going to venture doing is, this is Indian yellow with a tiny bit of alizarin crimson and white. And what I'm going to do is just add wider area. And then I'm going to use in the tip of the, of the brush a white accent and then I'm just going to gently and softly bring that. I think that would make sense, at least from the photo I have. That was the brightest area together with an area here that had some bright reflections from the water and the, the horizontal lines help explain this is water. I'm going to leave it this way. I think it's done. It gives impression of water. There's the colors now make more harmony and more sense. We fixed the pier and I hope that you did enjoy this video. The part one and part two of this video are also one hour long each one. And I will start by posting this and if people want to see part one and two, I can post them also. Um, so just let me know in the comments. Please check my videos, check my site, subscribe if you like it, and uh, see you soon for another acrylic painting demo or another painting demo, could be oils. Thank you very much.